Hey guys, it's Kate from Fitness, Family, and Food, and today I'm here for the next step in our series um, all about uh, the Mermaid Cup and um, talking about the quote some more. Uh, if you remember, uh, yesterday we pulled the vinyl stencil off to um, show the um, mermaid scales that were glittered onto the cup and today we are going to put on our first layer of epoxy. So I um, have a new setup where I made, uh, I stacked up some stuff so that I can put the cell phone on and hopefully you'll be able to see things clearer. So let me get the um, cell phone into position and then we'll get started. Okay, so here's our cup. From yesterday. This is what it looks like now. And today what we're going to be doing is putting um, the first layer of epoxy on. So this is the epoxy that I use. It is FDA approved and um, it's pretty easy to to work with. I am uh, I actually did get a different epoxy but I haven't started using it yet. I'm gonna use this up first and then I will um, give the other epoxy a try. Uh, the epoxy comes with two bottles. There's an A and a B and um, an A side and a B side. One is a little bit thicker than the other and uh, they mix together in order to make the epoxy harden and seal. Now they, it comes with uh, a little Dixie cup and um, after one use it gets pretty yucky. So I just throw that measuring cup away and I just go buy regular Dixie cups and then I don't really measure I use my measurement as being the spoon so there is one spoonful and it's is you know gelled up a little bit and I just pour that in and that was side B and you can see it has like a little tint to it this is getting a little old so that's what happens after a while. This is side A. And side A, let's see if we can get it to come out, is not as thin as the other side. So it takes a while. It's a lot thicker. But I also do the same measurement where I get one full, and it's not exact. I, I just eyeball it one full teaspoon and then I just put it right down in the cup and then the two are mixed together and then I take the first thing I do is I scrape off because as you can see the one spoon pretty much has nothing left on it but the other spoon because it's much thicker has a lot on it and so in order to get that mixed right you have to sort of scrape it off now the second Dixie cup I have just to stick it in it's really useless but it's easier to pull the spoon back out of the Dixie cup than it is off a of paper because it sticks to the paper so then you have paper stuck in your epoxy and then you have to stick your fingers in it and it just makes a really big mess so uh, I just mix it up. Now you'll see, let's see if you can see, you'll see some bubbles. And don't worry about those bubbles. They will come out. Um, I don't really worry. Some people um, are very fanatic about it where they'll only stir and they won't mix and they let it sit a certain amount of time and they do all sorts of stuff, but not me. 
Uh, I haven't ever had trouble with bubbles, and um, so it's really not something that I, I worry too much about. Now this is just a foam brush that I use, and uh, if I had wasn't doing a live, I probably would have shoved it on my turner and I would just use my fingers because that's easier. But I do keep these around. And sometimes I think they do help, and then other times I go back to just using, um, you know, my fingers. And then I'm like, no, I need a brush, and I really do go back and forth a lot with it. But um, I keep both around just in case because I think it's helpful. All right. So the next part is just putting the epoxy on your cup. So uh, while I do that, why don't I discuss the quote a little bit more so I have something to talk about. And today we're going to talk about taming your inner critic. You know, all of us have an inner critic, and some of us are better at taming that critic than others. You know... Everybody has flaws. Nobody is perfect. And once we get to the point where we understand and accept that, and we accept ourselves, flaws and all, we can really have a much happier, better life. Because you know what? We are all imperfect. None of us are perfect. So... What I want to talk to you a little bit about today are those private conversations that you have with yourself because, you know, they can be a very powerful tool, like a stepping stone almost, into reaching your goals. But they can also greatly influence how you act positively or negatively, depending upon how you use them. Your thoughts, that negative self-talk talk that you hear, those thoughts inside your head that aren't always the most positive, you know, they can be very self-destructive. If you think over and over and over that you can't, you will believe that. And you will get to the point where you will give up. And so one of the things that I always try to do is to take a moment and stop that and turn that around so that I can begin to make some positive changes rather than dealing with whatever negative thought I have in my head at the time. Now, listen, if you're overly critical of yourself, you know, like me, you're not alone. A lot of people have the tendency to get themselves stuck into a self-defeating situation in their own head. And uh, I'm going to go back. Now, you see it will run because I had it there too long. And so I'm just going to smooth it out. as we get this turned around. Fortunately, you don't have to be the victim of your own, you know, personal verbal abuse. I have four ways to talk to you today about stopping that negative cycle. The first thing is just to simply start to be aware. Sometimes you're not even aware of how negative your thoughts are. And so taking, you know, that moment to really think about what you're saying to yourself will help because you'll get a better idea as to what is going on inside your head. Listen to yourself. You know, what message are you sending yourself? Is it positive and encouraging or are you really allowing that negative self-talk to begin to bring you down. Second is stop ruminating. And this is an issue that I, I fall into all the time. 
You know, when some, I'm worried about something or something I'm struggling with, I play it over in my head, over and over and over. I don't stop. I really don't. And I just keep replaying it and think, well, what should I do? Or what if this? Or what if that? And, and I take a lot of effort in going back over that is really wasted effort because it does not help you get to the point where you can solve it. All it's doing is going over what happened in the past. The second thing is that Third thing, sorry, third thing is you can replace these thoughts with more accurate statements. You know, have you ever said, oh, I never do anything right, or oh, I always mess this up. I mean, I've said that. And honestly, is that true? Is that a true accurate statement? Do you honestly mess up every single thing you try to do? No. Do you honestly take and you know every time you do something you make a mistake no there are lots of things that you do that I'm sure you do successfully so you have to replace those critical thoughts with an accurate statement to help you be able to really see the clearer picture and then the next thing is to balance your acceptance with self-improvement. I know it sounds like that is definitely something that you don't think goes together, but it does. You know, there's a difference between telling yourself that you're not good enough and reminding yourself that there's something you need to work on. And that's the key that you have to really get to. Because, you know, you have to be willing to work on yourself to get better without putting yourself down in the process. All right. Well, we got the bottom part done. And I'm going to have to stop and um, put it on the turner so that I can put the top part on. But this is what it looks like. You will see that there is um, some glitter that's mixing into the background, and that's okay because the next second coat that I'm going to put on, I'm actually going to put some glitter in the epoxy and really make it shine and sparkle. Um, so this is how uh, I put this all together. Let's see if I can... The light is not the best, is it? But anyways, I have to keep spinning it until it dries. It's going to go on a handmade rigged up turner so that I don't have to stand here and do this for an hour. And uh, I will show you probably on Monday, not tomorrow. Tomorrow I have a craft show so I probably will not be able to get on to do my live. But on Monday I will show you what it came out like and we will um, put a decal on it. So thanks for joining me. And I will see you later. Have a great day.